So what is the probability that two cards drawn at random from a deck of cards will both be aces? Now you know that the probability of pulling one card and getting an ace is 4 out of out of 52. And so it's really tempting to say the probability of getting an ace uh, and another ace is 4 out of 52 times 4 out of 52, right? Using our multiplication rule. Now unfortunately, this is not going to work. Why? Because these two events are not independent. Uh, because after we pull out our first card, uh, sorry, after we pull out the first ace, it changes the, not only the number of cards in the deck, but also the number of aces in the deck, right? So now for our first draw, Right? Probability of ace on the first draw is still 4 out of 52. But for our second draw, this is going to change. This is now the probability of an ace on the second draw, second draw, given, and we use this little bar for given, uh, given an ace on the first draw. And this is what's called a conditional probability. So here, how many possible outcomes, how many possible cards can one draw on the second draw? There's only 51 cards left, and so it's going to be, uh, out of 51. Uh, now how many aces are left? Uh, there are only three aces left now. Uh, and so our probability ends up being 12 out of 2652, or in other words, uh, 1 out of 221 rather than, uh, the 4 out of 52 times 4 out of 52, okay? So again, this is called a conditional, uh, probability. Now let's look at another case. Uh, let's find the probability that a die rolled, uh, shows a 6 given, so again, this is a conditional probability, given that a flipped coin shows a head. So this is the probability of a 6 on a die given, uh, head on a coin. Now in this case, we need to ask ourselves, are these two events independent? And the answer is yes. So in other words, this, in this particular case, doesn't matter. Why doesn't it matter? Because these are independent events. Uh, so the probability of rolling on a, the 6 on a die is the same as always. It is 1 out of 6. Let's look at one more case now. Let's look at a, uh, a table of values here. These are the speeding ticket folks. So let's find the probability that they have a ticket given that they have a red car. So now we're given that they have a red car, so we know right away that we're only talking about these 150 people. So we're only talking about out of these 150 people. Now out of those 150 people with a red car, so we already know that, how many of them got a ticket? Well, 15 of them got a ticket, so that's 15 out of 150, or 1 out of 10, or 10% 10 of people with a red car also had a ticket. Now, different question now is, what's the probability that they have a red car given that they have a ticket? Now this is not the same thing because now we're limiting ourselves to these 60 people. So we have 60 people total who got a speeding ticket. How many of them had a red car? 15 of them had a red car. So 15 out of 60 or 1 quarter or 25% of people with a speeding ticket had red cars, right? So these are the conditional probabilities, and it is important to, to notice here that the order here does matter. It does matter which piece of information you're being given.